In this video, I go over installing Windows 10 on GNOME boxes. So to start out this video, I kind of wanted to go over a couple caveats when you go ahead and install or create your very first virtual machine in GNOME boxes. Uh, number one, just installing the machine um, straight out, you need to make sure your BIOS settings are set properly. If you're using an Intel processor, make sure that you have a uh, virtual machine dash D or a VT dash D uh, enabled in your BIOS or um, IOMMU, make sure that is set to enabled, not auto, but enabled. And um, there's also a hidden setting, I think it's a CMS is what it is labeled for AMD Ryzen based processors. Um, so you have to have that virtualization ticked in your BIOS prior to doing this. If you don't, when you go to install Windows or another Linux distribution, it's gonna run horrible and it's gonna take forever. And if that happens to you, your virtualization settings are kind of messed up. You'll see a little warning box when you go to do this, it'll be a big banner on the GNOME boxes. And when that happens, you know you haven't had it set up properly. So go into your BIOS settings. Make sure those settings are set before starting this tutorial. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So go ahead and launch GNOME boxes. You can, I already have it pulled up here, but let's go ahead and pull up applications. It's just going to be the boxes icon here. So with that done, we'll flip back to here. It's launched. We'll go new and we're going to go ahead and select a Windows file. Um, I actually downloaded it here, but I'm going to go ahead and put this in my images directory. I like to kind of keep a nice repertoire of images I can load at any moment. And that will just go ahead and transfer over for me. Okay, now that our transfer is done, let's just go ahead and close that out. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and select that from my images folder here. And open. Continue. Oh, didn't take. Let's try that again. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick a username. Let's uh, call this Titus, sure. Let's add a super secure password, one, two, three, four. And if you want to go ahead and put a product key in here, you can, however, we're just gonna turn that off. And we're gonna go ahead and customize. Uh, I like to at least put four gigs on here um, for a Windows box, four gigs is pretty much the minimum requirements. Two gigs, it is uh, usable, but it's going to be very, very slow, very laggy. So not recommended. Um, disk size, 40 gigs. That's fine. I'm not going to do anything crazy with this instance. So with that, we'll hit the little back arrow and create. From here, it's going to go ahead and launch into our Windows instance. I'm going to speed all this up, but I'm going to go ahead and install, boot in, and do all the configuration. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, probably two or 3,000 uh, times on this one, so it should only take a couple seconds for you guys, but uh, it's probably going to take upwards of 15 to 30 minutes for me. Ah, uh, no. Windows crash, sad face. Oh, it was 18.09. No. Okay, 18.09 Windows is a bust. Well, color me surprised. <laughs> All right, we're going to delete this and we're going to go ahead. I'm, I'm going to just leave this footage in here just so you guys can see 18.09. No good. Shocking. That is one crappy update from Microsoft. So we'll go back into our images folder. Let's pick something else. 
We'll go to 1703, I believe, is that guy. But I know this one should work. It's a custom image that I did a while back since it's 1703, so that would have been late last year. And disk space needs to be about 40 gigs. Right in there. And here we go. Okay, now that we have Windows 10 installed on here, we need to actually install our tools, our guest tools, to make this virtual machine operate at peak efficiency, and it will be able to utilize a lot of our hardware. We'll also be able to pass through shared folders from our Linux machine to our Windows machine, and uh, be able to pass through USB devices a lot easier easier as well so let's go ahead and download spice tools and this is it right here i'm going to put these links in the description um, so you can easily get to it um, there's a lot of installers on here but there's only two that we actually need so if we go to windows binary this is the main one we want to use um, there's also this one here, the WebDAV. This is for folder sharing. I highly recommend it as well. All right, let's go ahead and click Run for our tools. Next, Agree, and this will go ahead and install. This does also add like a lot of drivers, so go ahead and make sure you hit Install for those. Um, and it's just a great addition for any Windows install you do. You have to install Guest Tools. I can't emphasize it enough. You're really just hamstringing yourself if you don't do this. Um, the second thing I'm going to show you is the WebDAV, which is pretty neat in its own right. It basically allows you to, like, let's say you want to map your home directory to this specific instance. So if you have something in your download folders you want to share with your Windows, um, you can easily do that. You can just pull up uh, this computer and then click on A, Z. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. And you'll see my resolution auto fixed and it looks far more crisp and clear now. So we'll go ahead and install our web dev as well. Yes. And that is it. So we are pretty much done with the installs on the actual machine itself. I always like to just give it a reboot just to kind of make sure all those changes took. And why this is rebooting, I like to go to Properties and Devices and Sharing. And now you'll see we actually have a plus sign here. Let's go ahead and map our home drive while this reboots. Um, you know what? I will put it under Downloads and say Downloads. Save and close this guy out. Once this does, we log back in, and you'll see, one, it's working a lot faster. We have a far better resolution now. You'll see it's opening and covering the entire monitor, and if we go to My Computer, you will find this right here. We'll open that guy up, and you'll see this is my downloads from the actual Linux host of this virtual machine. Very cool. Highly recommend doing these things. Most people when they use GNOME boxes, they're like, hey, I want to do all this stuff. And they, they're like, no, the performance is crap, or I can't get to my files on my Linux box. And I've seen just a vast array of people saying, do a share or all this other. No, <laughs> this is how you guys should do it. Um, I highly recommend it. But that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be probably doing a lot more virtualization videos just because I do still use some functionalities like After Effects and stuff like that. I haven't quite learned Resolve all the way yet. I'm starting to really dabble into that and I'm really liking it. Um, however, there are still some Windows programs and things that I need um, and virtualizing it is by far the best solution. Uh, I explained in one of my 
progress videos that wine I was just not very happy with and there was a lot of things that I needed personally and this really helped me out as far as gnome boxes goes I like it because it's just kind of seamless and it just works pretty good as far as virtualization goes you still gotta launch and start um, your Windows instance which is a bit of a headache but that's okay I'm not launching into this every single uh, hour or a day once you get more and more into Linux you start to really transition to a lot of Linux based programs um, however I still do come in here about once every couple days and I need something and this works great for that thanks for watching my video if you have any questions or comments please let me know below and I'll get back to you and if you liked it please hit the like button and if you'd like to see more tech videos, please hit the subscribe button and check me out on my website, chrystitus.com.